Welcome back. Welcome back. Sorry about that. I'm getting my two next panelists ready. I have to uh, give them some theme music and uh, the right introduction here because that's how we do it in business inside the game. Uh, thank you guys for watching, tuning in. Hope you've been inspired from you know our big panel to Slick Sports Lifestyle and Culture. Uh, you wish talking about multicultural storytelling. Uh, all, also, the demos and the opportunities to speak with, you know, these multicultural entrepreneurs uh, who look like me and look like everybody else that's out here watching and really build our ecosystem up. And so, you know, uh, this is where we get into, uh, I would say, my part. <laughs> uh, I get to interview people that, you know, I talk to, uh, I admire, um, and really want to, you know, just have them share their platform, their knowledge as inspiration um, and also as a direction for leadership and a path for leadership. And so um, my two panelists are incredible women, uh, lighting pathways for multiculturals, lighting pathways, disrupting, you know, um, really changing what we're seeing in society. Uh, in venture and also in sports. Um, and I'm just going to do this real quick. All right. My point guard, <laughs> starting point guard, the executive director of the MBPA, the first woman to lead a professional sports union. She is a renowned trial lawyer. She's tried over 100 cases in state and federal courts. She has been named the finest pure trial lawyer in Washington, D.C. by the Washington Magazine. She is the leader of the NBPA, Michelle Roberts, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, babe. All right. <laughs> Next up, <laughs> Deborah Quazo, managing partner at GSV Ventures, a fund that invests in education and workforce skills. She is the co founder of ASU Times GSV Summit, which is their first and 12th year, which is in their 12th year and they celebrate innovators, innovation across the globe. She served on numerous education boards, to name a few, Chicago Board of Education, Ascend Learning, uh, the Educational Testing Service. Without further ado, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Deborah Quazzo. Thank you, Baron. <laughs> See, I'm like dropping stuff and my cue cards. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> thank you, ladies. I really appreciate you doing this. Uh, welcome to Business Inside the Game. Michelle, you're super familiar because uh, you've, <laughs> you've been a partner, a sponsor, a friend. Uh, Deborah, a new partner, sponsor, and friend. And, you know, just really uh, one just happy and honored to have you both here with us uh, for our audience and also our members tuning in on Zoom. So thank you for for being here. Thank you. Awesome. All right, so now now let's get into, you know, let's get let's get going. You know, as women, right? You know, uh not only are just you disrupting, but you know, you're you're lighting pathways, right? You're 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 you've been disrupting trends, right? So I would love for you to just speak about, you know, your your journey, right? And how you started your vision for yourself, right? For these entrepreneurs and, and also some of the hurdles that help you become who you are today. Um, we'd love to start with you, uh, Michelle. Sure, I mean, I, there's not enough time. <laughs> the short story you know, was and is, um, you know, you, you, I ended up being fortunate enough, and I, I say this all the time because it's just undeniably true, fortunate enough to have someone in my life that created a platform that allowed me to, to dream. Um, you know, I, I did not come from, not only did I not come from money, 
<laughs> we didn't even know what money looked like. That's how poor we were. And so there was no reason for me to even think about anything other than you know, maybe just staying alive, which is which is cool. So, you know, survival is, is, is huge in some of the neighborhoods I've seen in my life and certainly the neighborhood I came from. But for me, it began and ended with someone who understood that, that there was value in me and, and told me early on that there was value in me and that I could pursue my dreams. It was my mom, you know, it sounds corny, but that's just the truth. Um, and But for her, I, I can't even imagine what I would be, but only because of her, I was able to imagine what I could be and then did it. Um, you know, it takes a lot of hard work and it takes a lot of support from people who believe in you. Um, and without those things, I don't frankly cast dispersion on those people who don't succeed. This is not something you can do on your own. Um, you may have to do it with very few people there, but at the end of the day, you've got to figure out a way to both believe in yourself and then have other people that believe in you and then work as hard as you possibly can to get there. So, you know, I, again, I, I, we could go on for five hours, but at the end of the day, that's that's how, how it started. Very poor, very confident, and then tr struggle to maintain that confidence no matter what I ended up doing. Love that, Deborah. Okay, well, um, that's fantastic. I, I don't. I, I'm not worthy to be on this stage with Michelle. I'll start with that one. But um, I will. You know, so I grew up in uh, as a white girl in south in the southeast, um, and I, for whatever reason, in, in the 1960s, 1970s. So I'm I'm coming up on my 60th year here. So the good news is I, I thought I dealt with sexism. Now I get to deal with ageism. So that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's coming down the pike real fast. Um, but, you know, but I, for whatever reason, I think it is thanks to, to you know, my family and um, I, my parents, particularly commitment that I could do anything I wanted to put my head to it. I, you know, early on got kind of indignant about inequities and, um, and they were, they were plentiful. Um, and I, you know, whether, I think I ran my first protest in eighth grade and then protested a women's issue uh, at my, my high school in, in um, 11th grade and, and then went on to college and, you know, wrote, wrote actually my senior thesis on the National Women's Party in the post-suffrage decade. So I, um, I did it, it, it and I still think back I, and I, and I, about how it all came into play, but I do think it was, you know, a, a great family that was, um, uh, who could, you know, always told me that everything should be accessible and I believe that everything should be accessible for all people. So um, I think coming out of that experience uh, made me different and, and kind of made me um, uh, think about how I could change things early. And I think it, 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 Michelle sort of said this, but when, when things, when I really got to align my passion, which is, um, Baron talked about it, I focus on education, innovation, education, technology as a lever for equity. Um, that's when I really got that fly, you know, those gears together, that's when, when things really took off. It, it didn't, and it, and, and it, um, it didn't happen when I was 20. So it did, it did, it took until I was about, uh, 45, 50. So, um, I, I think it, the, uh, you know, all things don't happen to you. And, you know, it's not just the young people who, uh, <laughs> who start taking off. So. Yeah. And, and I would say, you know, uh, being a change agent is an understatement, right? You know, uh, being a pioneer to change agents, right? And looking at, you know, women, uh, you know, and as, you know, a minority and an underserved community as far as, you know, investors and C-suites and, and leaders and entrepreneurs being invested in, you know, um, how do we go about, you know, um, really igniting and bringing in and, and building an ecosystem to, you know, identify who those uh, change agents are, right? And what is some of the advice that we would give, you know, to the women out there that are, you know, looking to be, you know, those pioneers and those change agents for, uh, for women's success in business? That's a question. Uh -huh. I think that's more of a, you should start on that one, Deborah. Well, I, I think that, yeah, I mean, I think that I'm, um, I'm obsessed with Isabel Wilkerson's cast. Um, and, um, and it's caught, and that's the most brilliant book of perhaps the decade. We've just started the decade, but, um, but it's caused me actually also to think differently about everything is what, what she does is she sort of focuses on, on the, the issue of caste as it relates 
particularly to black Americans, but also really to every person who has been cast. And I think for and I think what we need to do is think about what we do to women in the workforce, in um, top legal jobs, that, um, as Michelle has had in things like that. How do we kind of create these, you know, how do we create image, images, you know, a woman being tough is a bad thing. How many times has Michelle heard that? <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like, oh my God, you know, say that about a man, it's like, oh, give him $20 million because he's tough. You say that about a woman, it's like, you're never going to give him money. Um, so it's like, it's, I think we got to start thinking about the characteristics that have been, I mean, they're completely man-made, right? I mean, it, these are not, these are not actual things. They're all man, cast as man-made and it's man's inhumanity to man is my other pieces. But, um, and so I think we got to think about how to break that down. Creating community is so important. We've, we've got a wonderful community within the, the sort of slice of the world, tech world that I operate in of women and a wonderful community of amazing men who are out there in front protecting, um, you know, protecting, not protect, defending, supporting, elevating, you know, moving forward um, women in the in the community. And, I, and it definitely takes two to tango. So we need we need both sides of the community to to support it. But um, but I do think it's really about thinking about what how we box people in um, with different you know there are a thousand different ways to do it. And we got to you know, we got to unwind the cast. Yeah, I mean, it, it, Deb, Deb and I didn't choose to be women. I'm, I'm sure you as I am proud of hell to be a woman. But you know this is kind of the cards that were dealt. And so as young girls and women begin to think about what they want to do with their lives, it has to begin with them wanting to, 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 to not be cast, right? So you've got to, so you have, yeah. got to go ahead and instill in young girls and young women the, 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 the will to fight because it is tough. And it's gotten, God knows it's gotten a lot easier, but it is tough. And so it's got to begin there. And, the two, and, and that's almost the, the, the hardest part because frankly, once you get young girls and women of the view that look, we have the right to be in the room, we will get in the room and we will, the, mm -hmm. the rest will follow because we're not gonna allow it not to. But the hardest thing has been to get women and girls to, to believe. And what I've, and honey, I'm older than you are, so welcome to- yeah, welcome, uh, just, welcome. By, just by a couple <laughs> years, I, I checked that. You know, uh, right, I'm, we're right in there together. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> really, really so, but, 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 so I've seen, I've seen, God, there's a lot, a lot of progress, a lot better, but you know, there's still ways to go. We will make it happen. It's not gonna happen because someone suddenly realizes it's so the you're right. care thing, right? So we'll have to make it happen, and then that that second shoe will will necessarily drop because we'll make it drop. Well, honestly, you, yeah, take, was, you taking the position yeah. you you've just taken is extraordinary. I mean, you were elected by all men. There you go. Yeah, it is. <laughs> there it is. And that I need that it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, uh, that that prompts kind of my next question is you know being in a space where you know, it's been predominantly, you know, kind of ran by men or kind of think about this, this old boys network, right? You know, uh, what is the best thing about being, you know, a woman, you know, in this leadership position? And, you know, what is that responsibility, you know, look like as we continue to talk about, you know, lighting those pathways? Well, I will say that, that Timing is everything, at least as far as I think my ability to, to have the job I have right now. As much as I admire our players, and God knows I do, I suspect that 25 years ago, th there was not a chance in hell that I wanted to take him taken seriously, right? Um, and so kudos to, to progress and the struggles yes. that have allowed women to be given much more credibility. But at the, you know, at the end of the day, and this is what I like about, about, about people complain about millennials all the time, and, and I'm among them, <laughs> but the good news is that they don't have a lot of the baggage that certainly my generation had. Um, and so candidly, they view me as, you know, can she do the job? And once they determine, you know, yeah, she can. I don't spend a lot of time thinking about the fact that I'm a woman. And I kind of feel that they don't spend a lot of time thinking about it either. Now this comes down to competence. And, and that's huge. If you can get to a point where your, your your colleagues, your peers, and the people that you work for, you know, view you back at your woman as as cool, but but at the end of the day, they're more interested in your competence. Then I think you you can check a, a box in a real way. I think that's right. Well, uh, I think it keeps going with Gen Z. Um, you know, we do have probably a little more work to do in the tech sector, where 
unfortunately, um, female, yeah. female, you know, led funds are in the single digits and, and female, um, female and people of color uh, backed uh, venture capital um, initiatives, companies are in the single digits. And, and, but I also think I think the world has is focused is very focused on this now, and I think it will it will all we're going to need a good five years mm -hmm. um, to get the numbers to begin to change. But I think I think you know law is interesting because you it probably saw some of the first changes I would guess, yeah. um, and I, I think that with it it is all about attention and and the and the generational moves and and um, and then you know and and have it and, and staying very focused on it. So we. Um, I think I think we'll, we'll get there. We got a little ways to go, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I love that. Love that. And 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 to your point about, you know, getting there in five years, uh, well, we have a clean four-year start. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> no, we're so, still we're still waiting. We, huh? I can I can <laughs> drink a, a sip of this can to that. Uh, I'm going to toast to uh, you know our our new president uh, Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris and just kind of you know knowing how integral you both were. Uh, can you just talk about you know you know your power you know using your power right for change and really you know I would say Michelle if you could start the work that you guys really did by one, deciding to go back to play, right? And then to go back to play with purpose, yeah. right? And using that opportunity to, you know, push your initiatives across the line. Can you, you know, talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. and, and, and as you know, there had been some, some, some discussion among the players about whether or not, which was new in play, would be a distraction. I mean, clearly many of our players were in, 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 in Passionately engaged in the discussion surrounding you know, police misconduct, and th and there were there were players who said, "No, we, if we st if we restart the season, then we're going to distract from this, and people are going to focus on basketball." And, and so there was this heady, heated conversation. And at the end of the day, I think the players came out exactly right. They said, "You know, our platform is not something that we can ignore. When we play, and we, people are watching, and we can use their attention to educate." And to inform and to and to spread the message, and they and they did that, and I, I thought it worked beautifully. Um, in addition, and it complemented the the work that they did individually and collectively outside of the court. Um, and it, it's not my power; it's their power, and and it, it's it, it's it's an amazing thing to watch young people uh, believe that they have the responsibility to contribute to the well-being of their communities. And these players did it and, and are continuing to do it. And there's no question in my mind, but that they made an enormous contribution to this election. If, if for no other reason, can help to bring millions more people to the polls. And so I, I can't begin to be anything other than impressed and watch them and, and, and facilitate their efforts going forward. I love that. And, and and also Deborah, you know, you're doing it, you know, as far as you know, putting your money where your mouth is, right? So, well, yeah. you know, yeah. you, you, try, you, yes. you, you know, yes. you, you, you've stepped up, right? Um, and I, you know, we always say in basketball, like if you don't talk to talk, you got to walk to walk. So, you know, would love for you to just expand on, you know, during you know the last administration and you know, up until the election, seeing where, you know, your focus what is, right, and, and what you want to continue to accomplish going forward uh, with this new election. Yeah, well, our, you know, our, regardless of politics and our, you know, Arnie Duncan is a dear advisor of ours, for one, um, we, you know, our, our mantra has been consistent. We, we don't want it to be disrupted by, by noise that's not productive. And our mantra really is that all all people, capital A, capital L, capital L, people have equal access to the future. And we believe that this, you know, that that investing in innovative education companies and actually convening a large community of a large global community, which Barron actually participated in this year, which is very cool, the ASU GSV community. Um, we convened 15,000 people online in, in uh, September and October, and we ran 
of, you know, we, we ran a very serious program around equity and access and truth and reconciliation and actually got to have Isabel Wilkerson on, which was fantastic amongst other things. But, um, but we, and, it, and it's, it's a smaller platform than Michelle's, but, um, but, but within our, you know, it, you know, is, it is all of our responsibilities our to use our platforms to, to basically, you know, embrace community, expand community, and deliver message around these critical issues. And I think that that's the thing I'm most proud of. We also, you know, we are venture capital investors, and in our, our, we're in our second fund, and over 70% of our companies that we've invested in are founded and or led by women or people of color. And um, so we're very proud of that because that's not a statistic that um, is typically heard in in, um, in in technology investment generally. So, and, and by the way, we didn't even, and that was not like we contrived it. It actually, it happened because we, you know, we opened our, you know, our community, we opened our arms and, and we want people who, who are brilliant entrepreneurs who look like the world. And, um, and that's really important. And, and if they all look like me, we'd be in trouble. So, um, <laughs> so it's a good, it's been a good, uh, you know, it's been a good, a good thing. But the community, we had great conversations throughout this whole period. And in fact, I'm really proud. Tomorrow, Harvard Business School is actually teaching a class on a on a session we convened in the spring with with four um, of the most preeminent African American leaders in the education community, um, and uh, they're using that program as as the as the curriculum material for the course tomorrow. So that, we're very proud of that. It's very exciting. It's amazing. That is truly amazing. And, you know, I want to talk about it, you know, uh, Kamala Harris, vice president, you know, um, you know, seeing a woman, you know, in a position of power, you know, um, how does that help, you know, just kind of continue to push, push, you know, uh, this agenda forward, right, of, you know, women in, in leadership and how, how do you, and how does that make you feel, um, seeing you know, Kamala Harris in office now? Yeah, could watch her Instagram post all day long. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It, 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 um, you know, I, I, I remember um, that despite the fact that I had determined I wanted to be a lawyer when I was very young, I, you know, I didn't see a black woman lawyer until my second year of law school. I didn't know any, and I had never seen one. And I, I, and I was like, like watching, um, you know, I was like a fan. I went into a courtroom and I saw this black woman arguing to a jury, and I was mesmerized. And I remember, and I've always said this: had I, and, and somehow I decided I was going to be a lawyer anyway. But had I seen one earlier, hell, I'd be on the Supreme Court, right? And, <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 and knowing what is possible at a young age. Is incredible. Um, I think about young women, black, black women, and different who are seeing this work, um, you know, a heartbeat away from the presidency. I think it's huge. I think it's huge. I, I don't have I don't have daughters. I have nieces, and we all wept in joy when the, when the election results came in because it was it was a confirmation of something that we all want to believe, and that is we can do it. Um, Love it. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's it's huge, and I think it, and what's so cool about Kamala and both of them actually is that they had they um are actually I was just reading a post over the week. It, there's so many firsts. Um, you know, first black woman vice president, first Indian American woman vice president, mm -hmm. first or, or Southeast Asian, and first um, you know so that was this amazing. Joe Biden is the first president to go to a public university in like 50 years, 60 years, which is kind of hysterical, right? That we've got this elite system that we don't even have our public school, public university graduates actually ascending to the presidency or the vice presidency. And she and she is the first HBCU graduate to be in the president or vice president. So it's like so it's so cool how many firsts there are amongst these two. Um, it's everything's open. Mm -hmm. All right. I know this was uh, supposed to be a short panel. I know we could. I can talk to y'all all day because we do. Uh, <laughs> but you know, one, as I, 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 I would say, for me, the beauty of me being able to 
you know, moderate or ask questions is to also learn and to always kind of like in my mind, like map out, you know, what we're about to do. And so it's just, you know, for me, it's really about the education. It's about, you know, um, the confidence, right? Being able to have confidence through your hurdles, have confidence through your trying times, right? And know that, you know, you are a person first, right? You have every responsibility and every opportunity to realize who you are. If you can see it, if you can touch it, if you can get next to it, you can be it. That is a huge part of our manifesto. And I think that, you know, if you can see it and you can ignite it and you can lift it up, you know, that is exactly what we want to do on both sides. And I want to thank both of you women for, you know, uh, and catalysts, change agents, pioneers, uh, and, you know, all that you do. And, you know, one, you know, we you know, praise a lot of, you know, media and a lot of things that happen in media, but it's really, you know, the people in your positions, right? The women in your positions that are, you know, making things happen and, and, and making change happen. And, you know, that's why we have a new presidency, you know, and it's a collection us and I, I want to thank you for just continuing to be who you are and for our audience. Uh, I hope they got some game because this was a big game. <laughs> this was a game by two point guards. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you for joining us for Business thank Society. You. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks, really thanks. appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Great to meet you. Great to meet you.